Happy Monday, everybody. Hope you're having a good day today so far. Hope you had a good weekend. Um, mine was uneventful. Not really much to talk about. Um, I talked about the Valentine's Day banquet that I went to with my mom at her church um, yesterday. So, otherwise I would have updated with that story today probably. But, since I've already talked about it, no reason to talk about it again. I have a headache though, so I'm going to try and get through this without it getting worse. I took some Advil, so hopefully it kicks in pretty soon. Um, other than that, everything's fine, I guess. Um, work could be better. Some stuff happened last week. Um, obviously, I'm not going to name names, but um, I did have to let somebody go. And so obviously now that means, you know, more work and more pressure on everybody else. But that also means more hours for everybody, more money. So, I mean, it... It sucks, but then it's also beneficial, and hopefully it's only for a little while, and I can um, find help, or the the newer girl that I, I hired that she's only working three days a week, I'm doing my best to talk her into just coming full-time six days a week, said, you know, I'm, we'll make it worth your while, that way you can just come to one place instead of you know, one place every other day, go there that day, here that day, <clears throat> so we'll see what happens, hopefully um, she'll come and work with us full time, that would be great, anyway, let's start today with our daily promise, and it says, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all, Ephesians 1 verses 22 and 23. May his name be exalted forevermore. Christ reigns with complete control over all of the earth and the heavenly, heavenlies. From the vast universe to the individual lives of his church, all is under his excellent supremacy. In his unsearchable greatness, God supplies all things to his creation, and especially to his children. By his fullness, we have received grace upon grace and blessing upon blessing. Whether by heaven or earth, all things have been made whole by the precious blood of Christ Jesus. And it lists here John 1, 16 that says, And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. Okay. <clears throat> also, just, if you happen to hear any noise in the background, it's because they're outside working on the fence. So, um, hopefully it doesn't pick up any of that sound. Um... The first thing that I wanted to talk about, because it's not like it's super important, but um, I thought it was worth mentioning, um, because the stuff with Joe Rogan is still happening. Now, I think um, Joe Rogan made a mistake by apologizing, because that's not what they were ever looking for, and that's not why they were upset, because of him saying the N-word, you know, on some of his shows over the last 12 years. They weren't mad about that. They were just... They were mad because they didn't get him kicked off Spotify when he brought on guests that they didn't like to talk about COVID. That's why they were mad. And since it didn't work, they tried to find some other reason. And um, I don't remember who went out and was questioning people. But every time he, he asked a white person, they were like, oh, yeah, no, he shouldn't have said that. He should go. But when... All the black people were asked if they had a problem with it. Most of them were like, well, he didn't say it to me. No, I don't really care. Um, so we can see where the problem really is. It, no, nobody, truly nobody has a problem with it. They're lying when they say that they do. Um, because everybody knows that in the context does matter. Um, in, in the way if you use certain words, context does matter. And Joe Rogan is not a racist, and they know that. They would, they just want him kicked off. They don't like the other stuff that he does. But um, uh, T-Pain, if you don't know who that is, he's a rapper. And he got behind Joe Rogan, and he said that if Spotify censors him, then they have to take off all of the derogatory things that people say. And that, that's everybody. Because, yes, at the same time, you have other people saying things that are very derogatory. And I'm not talking about black people using the N-word in their rap songs. 
But other things, there's derogatory remarks about women, and nobody complains about that in rap music, but they complain about derogatory remarks when someone just says it. And um, even if they, are, they aren't saying that about a woman, maybe they are just repeating something, they would get mad about that. But if it's in a rap song, it's okay. <clears throat> and I have to agree with T-Pain here that, you know, no one should be censored for that. If you're going to use certain words in your music, if you're going to say certain things in your music, or if you're just going to say it because maybe that's what you believe, you have every right to say it and believe it. And no one has a right to censor you, especially not when it's being, when they're being told by the government to censor you. When Jen Psaki gets out there and tells all of the social media platforms, we want y'all to censor this type of stuff, then they are an arm of the federal government now. They are not a free social platform anymore. And, um... So we know that it's illegal for the government to censor people's free speech. And it's not it's not illegal for a social media platform to not allow certain things on their platform. Unless they're getting section two is it section two thirty protection? So when they say that they're they're not publishers, they're just an open forum, a utility like phones, um, which means with the, that protection they cannot be liable for anything that is said on their platform. But if they become publishers and they start picking and choosing what can go on their platform and what cannot based on ideology, then they no longer are a utility. They are a publisher. And they shouldn't get that protection anymore. And now they are liable for what is on their platform. So they have to pick and choose because they can't have your, their cake and eat it too. So... Um, I, I know that uh, Ted Cruz is working on a lot of stuff with big tech and getting, you know, getting some of their power taken away so people can stop being censored, um, conservatives especially. So I know he's working on that and he did a an interview with Steven Crowder and I can't remember everything that he said about this bill, but hopefully um, with this election and getting some new people um, you know, it, with the 2022 election, we've got to get good people in there because if we can get, gain more seats back and take over the Senate, things like that, then I think something can be done. But if we don't get that, I don't think anything's going to happen until the next time that we can get someone in there that can start backing it. Um, I'm not going to read the article. I just wanted to point out that, you know, it, there are people that are still backing not kicking Joe Rogan off of Spotify and not censoring him. And I think that's good. Now, moving on. The EU Health Agency. Now, I posted this on Twitter and Facebook, I think even Instagram, about um, how before they used to say that the vaccines could not mess with a woman's menstrual cycle, that it defied the science. It absolutely couldn't happen because the vaccine didn't do that. And then shortly, I think it was in January of 2022, a study came out saying that, yes, the vaccines can temporarily um, alter your menstrual cycle, and but that it wasn't serious, it was minor, and it was temporary. So now from Blaze Media is an article by Chris Pandolfo um, where the EU Health Agency is going to investigate whether the mRNA vaccines affect women's menstrual cycles. Well, we've already had a study done by scientists that says it can, but I'm wondering if this is going to be a more in-depth one to see if it's, in fact, temporary and minor. So it says... European regulators are investigating reports of heavy menstrual bleeding in the absence of menstruation in women who have received an mRNA COVID-19 vaccine. The European Medicines Agency Safety Committee said Friday it is reviewing reports that the COVID-19 vaccines from Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna are disrupting women's menstrual cycles, Reuters reported. The agency said it is not clear whether there is a casual link between the disorders and the vaccines. Women's menstrual cycles can be affected by a range of underlying medical conditions, 
as well as from stress and tiredness. The EMA said, though, there are reports that women have had unusual menstrual cycles after being infected with COVID-19. A recent study found that mRNA vaccines may be linked to small temporary changes in a woman's menstrual cycle. Researchers at the Oregon Health and Science University in Portland found that those who received their first dose waited 0.71 days longer on average for their next menstrual cycle when compared to their cycles before vaccination. The study also noted that unvaccinated women with normal menstrual cycle histories experienced a 0.07-day increase in cycle length on average, as the Blaze previously reported. The study was funded by the National Institutes of Health, which collected data from nearly 4,000 users of a smartphone app that tracks menstrual cycles. The EMA previously said in December that it has not established a link between changes in menstrual cycles and the vaccines after a study from Norway suggested some women experienced heavier periods following vaccination. The EMA's Pharmacovigilance Risk Assessment Committee said it will review all available data to determine if there's a link between the vaccines and unusual menstrual cycles, including reports from patients and doctors, clinical trials, and published studies. The agency added that there is no evidence to suggest that the vaccines affect fertility in response to rumors circulating social media that the vaccines have an impact on fertility. Well, I did read an article um, that it was um, they were monitoring all of the people in the military because they're very closely watched with their health and the medical calls that they make, hospitalizations and things like that, and that it has gone up. Miscarriages have gone skyrocketed among women in the military that have been vaccinated. And also, um, I don't know if it mentioned anything about just infertility in general, but I do know it mentioned a skyrocket, like just way higher um, for what the numbers were over the last five years um, compared to 2021. So, Take that as you will. Look into it. This is just something that's coming from, and they're, they're investigating it, um, but this is something coming from women in the military that all of that data is kept, they keep a close eye on all of that. And it's probably the best uh, group of people that we can figure out what's going on and what may be linked to the vaccines and what isn't. Um, and NIH-funded study published in January looked at more than 2,000 couples and found that vaccination did not impact the chances of conceiving a child in either men or women. However, couples had a slightly lower chance of conception if the male partner had been infected with um, COVID within 60 days before his partner's menstrual cycle, which suggested that COVID may reduce male fertility. And I think we've already talked about that early on, too. Quote, the findings provide reassurance that vaccination for couples seeking pregnancy does not appear to impair fertility, said Diana Bianchi, MD Director of NIH's Eunice Kennedy Schreiber National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. Um, you know, we, we've been lied to so much by the so-called, quote-unquote, you know, experts um, that it's really hard to know who you can and can't trust and what you can and can't believe these days. It really is hard. Okay. Um, let's look at this story here. Um, so if you don't know who Ibram X. Kendi is, uh, he's a, he's a race pimp, just like Al Sharpton and, you know, Joy Reid. They're all race baiters. They know what they're doing is ridiculous, but they make a lot of money doing what they're doing, which is why they do it. This article was written by Samuel Mangold Lynette. Um, so there is an investigation into the University of Virginia for paying Ibram X. Kendi $541 per minute. Per minute. But the best part of all is for an anti-racist lecture, okay? Quote, unquote, anti-racist. So, the University of, Gen of Virginia recently paid tens of thousands of dollars for the privilege of hosting popular critical race theorist Ibram X. Kendi for a one-hour lecture on racial equity, reveals a new investigation from the Daily Wire. 
Okay, so this is the Daily Wire figured this one out. I didn't see this article over on Daily Wire. An investigative reporter at the Daily Wire, Gabe Kamensky, wrote that UBA paid Eva Max Kendi $32,500 or about $541 per minute. UBA hired Kendi through the Penguin Random House Speakers Bureau. The lecture was a free event held in late April of 2021. According to UBA, 876 people attended. Oh, why would anybody want to attend to listen to this man speak? Kendi, author of the 2019 New York Times bestseller, How to Be an Anti-Racist, has published several well-selling books through One World, an imprint of Penguin Random House. In an interview conducted to promote How to Be an Anti-Racist, Kendi claimed that it was not possible for capitalism and anti-racism to coexist. It's just... It's such nonsense... This is making my head my headache worse because it's just such word vomit. Okay. He said, I classify racism and capitalism as these conjoined twins. The origins of racism cannot be separated from the origins of capitalism. The origins of capitalism cannot be separated from the origins of racism. The life of racism cannot be separated from the life of capitalism and vice versa. As you sit and profit from capitalism to spew this nonsense if we did not have capitalism you wouldn't be making money ibram you would not get to do what you're doing because you think that you are this powerful person that would be uplifted and treated the same as everybody else no you would be on the bottom rung just as miserable as everybody else around the globe absolutely you would you are not special you make people money and you help push their agenda forward and keep dividing people. That is your purpose. You're a useful idiot. That is all you are. You are not special to these people. The minute they can't use you, you will be cast aside. Absolutely. Just like BLM has been cast aside after Kamala and Biden were installed into the presidency, they went and talked to BLM. They tried to get a hold of them. Nobody would communicate with any of the BLM leaders of the chapters in any of the states because they were useful idiots. They did their job, and now the government is done. They don't need them, and they don't care. And that's just exactly how it is with everybody. There's only a small handful of people who would be, you know, surviving and, and success, successful and rich and thriving if socialism were ever to take hold here in America. And Ibram X. Kendi is not one of those people. In fact, I can almost guarantee you they probably can't even stand that man. They just put up with them because they have to right now. They need to. And that's the part that bothers me so much is these people, you know, spout all this craziness about capitalism is evil and it's racist. But they are want some of the people that are profiting so much from capitalism. Like, do they not understand that? Or do they understand it, but they... Uh, uh, that's my problem. Are they that ignorant? Maybe they are. Maybe they are. I feel sorry for some of them. I pity some of them. Because some of them, I don't know if they truly understand. But people like Ibram X. Kendi, he absolutely understands what he's doing. But... Does he understand that he is a useful idiot? That's what I would like to know. Okay. Despite Kendi's disdain for the American economic system, capitalism has enabled him to sell hundreds of thousands of book copies. See? Kendi's books, along with his public and sponsored appearances, have propelled him into stardom. Because of public intellectuals like Kendi, critical race theory has infiltrated virtually every aspect of American life. CRT finds some of its most avid supporters in academia. <clears throat> Public schools teaching curricula pred predicated on the worldview emphasized by CRT caused an uproar from parents across the nation. In Virginia, parents resisting tax-subsidized CRT indoctrination helped to turn the tide of Virginia's recent gubernatorial race in favor of Glenn Youngkin. When asked why the university pays someone with such strongly contested views to speak on campus, UVA spokesperson Brian Coy said, quote, 
The University of Virginia welcomes speakers from a broad array of perspectives to our grounds every academic year, and we often do pay speakers fees or other compensation. Offering our community access to a diverse set of speakers and points of views is an important part of our academic mission. However, according to the Daily Wire, UVA does not have a record of paying tens of thousands of dollars to host culturally or politically conservative speakers. The university even refused to officially recognize the UVA chapter of Young America's Foundation, or YAF. It is known for helping students bring prominent conservative speakers to their campuses, like Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro, Michael Knowles. Um, UVA paid Kendi to participate in the school's racial equity speaker series that featured other critical race theorists like Eduardo Benilla Silva of Duke University. Silva, who has claimed that America has normalized the quote-unquote standards of white supremacy, was paid $10,000 to appear on a Zoom event for the university. So they're still trying to push the CRT down people's throats. They're never going to give that up. They're, they're just not going to give it up. So, uh, people might as well forget it. <laughs> because um, until new people are elected and we get these people out of power, they're not going to give it up. And maybe even then they won't. <clears throat> okay, one more story real quick. Um, well, I have like three more stories, but before I take a break. So this is um, a new report by Durham definitely shows Hillary Clinton funded the Russia collusion hoax. This is also by Samuel Mangold Lynette. According to a report despised by special counsel John Durham, Lawyers for Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign paid a technology company to infiltrate uh, servers belonging to Trump Tower and the White House in order to fabricate a narrative connecting Donald Trump to Russia. Durham's filing focuses on potential conflicts of interest related to the representation of Michael Sus Sussman, a former lawyer for the Clinton campaign. Is it Su Sussman or Sussman? I don't know. Has been charged with making a false statement to a federal agent he has pleaded not guilty. <clears throat> well, I'm surprised someone's been charged. The indictment against Suzman alleges that he told then-FBI General Counsel James Baker less than two months before the 2016 presidential election that he was not working for any client when he requested a meeting in which he provided the FBI with purported data and white papers that allegedly demonstrated a covert communications channel between the Trump Organization and the Kremlin-connected Alpha Bank. In a section of Durham's filing titled Factual Background, it is revealed that Sus Sussman had assembled and conveyed the allegations to the FBI on behalf of at least two specific clients, including a technology executive, um, considered Tech Executive One, at a U.S.-based internet company, Internet Company One, and the Clinton campaign. Durham's filings says Sussman's Billing records reflect that he repeatedly billed the Clinton campaign for his work on the Russian Bank One allegations. Sussman and tech executive one had met and communicated with a law partner who served as general counsel on the Clinton campaign. Fox News reports that this lawyer is Mark Elias. Per Durham, in 2016, tech, tech executive one worked with Sussman, an American investigative law firm, several cyber researchers, and employees at multiple internet companies to assemble the purported data and white papers. The filing states, quote, In connection with these efforts, Tech Executive One exploited its his access to non-public and or proprietary internet data. Tech Executive One also enlisted the assistance of researchers at a U.S.-based university who were receiving and analyzing large amounts of internet data in connection with the pending federal government cybersecurity research contract. Continuing, Tech Executive One tasked these researchers to mine internet data to establish an inference and narrative tying then-candidate Trump to Russia, Durham states. Quote, in doing so, Tech Executive One indicated that he was seeking to please certain VIPs, referring to individuals at Law Firm One and the Clinton campaign. Fox News reports that at Sussman's trial, Durham will establish that among the ill-begotten data forged by Tech Executive One and his associates is the domain name system's DNS internet traffic pertaining to 1. A particular healthcare provider, 2. Trump Tower, 3. Donald Trump Central Park West Apartment Building, and 4. The Executive Office of the President of the United States, or the EOP. 
The former chief investigator of the Trump-Russia probe for the House Intelligence Committee, Kash Patel, or Kosh Patel, said the filing, quote, definitely shows that the Hillary Clinton campaign directly funded and ordered its lawyers at Perkins Cole to orchestrate a criminal enterprise to fabricate a connection between President Trump and Russia. Now, <laughs> with evidence, you would think that Hillary would be being charged, um, indicted, going to trial, but I can almost bet you nothing will happen to Hillary Clinton. And I'll be shocked if anything does come down against her. We know that it should. But I just don't believe it will. So I would definitely be shocked if they indict Hillary on all of this evidence. And I, I mean, it would be a great thing. It would be wonderful if they would just finally do something. Hold somebody accountable for everything that they do. And Hillary Clinton's been connected to a lot of scandals. So, if they could finally hold her accountable for something, you know, the, the world would be a little bit better place with her not in it. Not to kill her, but for her to be sitting in prison somewhere. I think the world would be a little bit better. So, I believe the White House has told Americans that are in Ukraine that they need to leave immediately and come home. Because of how imminent this threat is of Russia invading Ukraine. While the Ukrainian president's president says that it's serious, but it's not that serious. But I don't know. But the U.S. State Department is requiring Americans fleeing Ukraine to show proof of vaccination to enter Poland. Despite Poland not requiring proof of vaccination for travelers. So they tell you to leave. Get out of Ukraine. <clears throat> but also, you can't get out of Ukraine unless you're vaccinated. But you need to get out right now. But you need to wait till you get vaccinated because we're telling you to leave, but you can't leave. Do they understand? Do, do they hear the ridiculousness in that statement? Leave now. It's important. They're going to be invaded by Russia. Get out. You need to leave. But you can't leave because you're not vaccinated. So you're screwed, basically. And the fact that you have to get vaccinated to flee a country that your government told you to flee. It's, I mean, it's just. We live in a clown world. Absolute clown world. And by the end of this episode, I'm going to prove to you how crazy. How much of a clown world and not just a clown world, but degenerate. We're headed straight to hell in a handbasket world we live in. And it's not political, has nothing to do with politics, but it's probably the craziest thing I've seen. And I've seen a lot of crazy TikToks with a lot of crazy radical leftists saying a bunch of junk, looking like weirdos. But I promise you, this one is the craziest. And this is exactly the path we're headed down. Because it's going to get worse, I bet. I bet more people are going to start doing this stuff. It's it's a thing of your nightmares, I'll swear to you. But you have to, you have to watch on YouTube to see it because you won't be able to see it on audio. Okay, Paul Saka wrote um, that the U.S. State Department announced Saturday that Americans fleeing Ukraine may enter Poland, but U.S. citizens must present proof of vaccination. This appears to be a U.S. State Department requirement since Poland does not require vaccinations to enter the country. So if you want to go visit another country and get out of America for a while, Poland be okay. Um, but my question is, are you going to be allowed back into America without proof of vaccination? Who knows? The security situation in Ukraine continues to be unpredictable due to the increased threats of Russian military action and can deteriorate with little notice. The announcement reads... U.S. citizens in Ukraine should depart immediately using commercial or other privately available transportation options. Um, you know, the president of Ukraine, he insists that Americans in Kiev are safer there than Americans in L.A. How true that is? I would tend to believe that because L.A. is a dumpster fire and very dangerous. And the fact that they... Um, at the time of recording this, the Super Bowl will be happening soon. 
And my worry is, are we going to hear about people getting hurt, robbed, killed, beat, raped? What are we going to hear about what happens there? Because we know that where they're having the Super Bowl, it's crime ridden right now. And it's been significantly higher here over the last year and a half, two years, maybe three. So what's going to happen to these people that were dumb enough to travel there and go to the Super Bowl? Because that's that important? Come on. Anyway, this is not about the Super Bowl. Um, Poland has indicated to the U.S. government that U.S. citizens may now enter Poland through the land border with Ukraine, the State Department bulletin notes. According to the State Department, U.S. citizens must present a valid U.S. passport and proof of COVID vaccination in order to gain entry into Poland. Travelers are also encouraged to present a negative test result from PCR or antigen COVID test, the notice states. Now, if this is Poland's country, do they not have the authority to decide who comes into their country over our State Department? Like, why does our State Department have control over Americans coming into Poland? We don't own that country. It's not our place. So I'm wondering why they have that kind of, why they have that authority. Um, but the State Department put out a tweet saying that Poland has indicated that U.S. citizens may now enter Poland through the land border with Ukraine. No advance approval is required. U.S. citizens must pre present a valid U.S. passport and proof of vaccine. However, Poland doesn't require U.S. citizens to be vaccinated to enter the country. The official website of the U.S. Embassy in Poland restrictions for Americans traveling to Poland. Okay, maybe that's why, because of the embassy there. <laughs> Starting December 15th, every person arriving in Poland from outside the, oh, Shenzhen, I have no idea, area, has to present a negative test result from a PCR or antigen COVID-19 test to enter the country. Children who are under 5 years of age are exempt from the testing requirement. There must be no more than 24 hours between obtaining the test result and crossing the border into Poland. Vaccination does not exempt an individual from the obligation to test. These regulations will be in place until February 28th, 2022. But you, you have to leave now, so you, you don't have time. You can't wait until February 28th, so you don't have to follow these guidelines. Then the official government website for the Republic of Poland says, Until February 28th, 2022, travelers crossing the Polish border as an external EU border are required to present to a border guard officer a negative diagnostic test results for covid in Polish or in English, performed within 24 hours before crossing the border and counting from the time the test result was generated, the test can be performed either in the country where the person begins his or her journey, at the airport in Poland before the border check, or within three hours after crossing the border. Any person who fails to present a negative test result to a border guard officer will be required to undergo a compulsory quarantine. In the event that a test is performed after crossing the border, the procedure for releasing a traveler from quarantine rests solely with the health inspection authorities, and as such, the traveler does not have to return to the border control area. The Polish Border Guard COVID-19 Restrictions for Travelers says, in accordance with the regulations of the Regulation of the Council of Ministers of May 6, 2021, on the establishment of certain restrictions, orders and bans in connection with the outbreak of an epidemic by February 28, 2022, Every person crossing the border of the Republic of Poland, constituting the external border as a rule, is obliged to present a negative result of the diagnostic test for COVID in Polish or English to a border guard officer in Polish or English, performed mainly before crossing the border within 24 hours, counting from the moment of obtaining this test result. The New York Times detailed the COVID-19 restrictions for Americans traveling to Poland, stating, Tourists coming from the United States may enter by air only. They can avoid a mandatory quarantine pre by presenting a negative test result. Administered no more than 24 hours before arrival. The U.S. Embassy notes that on arrival, testing is also available at Warsaw Airport. Children under 5 are exempt from the test requirement. Anyone who fails to present a negative test result must quarantine for 14 days. However, this can be shortened if the traveler obtains a negative result on a PCR test that is administered no sooner than 7 days after their arrival. So, just a bunch of nonsense, obviously. It really is getting ridiculous about this stuff. <clears throat> now, um, so 
something that the the DHS has done this before. And they put out a new National Terrorism Advisory System bulletin on February 7th, 2022. So this is the second time that they've done this. And it, this is a summary of it. So this is from the official DHS.gov website, okay? And it says, The United States remains in a heightened threat environment threat environment fueled by several factors, including an online environment filled with false or misleading narratives and conspiracy theories and other forms of mis, dis, and malinformation, or MDM, introduced and or amplified by foreign and domestic threat actors. Now, since when did believing in a conspiracy theory deem a person a national security threat, a domestic terrorist? When... Well, we know that happened in 2020. That's when it started. But people aren't free anymore to just believe in conspiracy theories. I know there's a lot of crazy ones out there. And I don't believe, uh, you know, 99% of the conspiracy theories that I hear doesn't mean that I don't think they're interested, interesting. And I like hearing them because I, I like to... I like to hear them, and then I want to know where these minds come up with these theories. And then if you are if you really enjoy it, you can break down the conspiracies, and you can find some kind of nugget of truth in those stories um, that people just built on and just made bigger and bigger. Some do it just for fun, and some actually believe them. But there's always a small nugget of truth in conspiracy theories, believe me. Um, it's just all the extra added stuff. But why, when did that become making someone a domestic terrorist? So, one conspiracy theory, the Illuminati. So, if you believe in the Illuminati conspiracy theory, are you a domestic terrorist? Or is it just certain conspiracy theories? I won't mention any because I don't want to get this video taken down. Okay, these threat actors seek to... Um, exacerbate societal friction to sow discord and undermine public trust in government institutions to encourage unrest, which could potentially inspire acts of violence. Mass casualty attacks and other acts of targeted violence conducted by lone offenders and small groups acting in furtherance of ideological beliefs and or personal grievances pose an ongoing threat to the nation. While the conditions underlying the heightened threat landscape have not significantly changed over the last year, the convergence of the following factors has increased the validity. Um, yeah, the is that the validity? No, the volatility. No. Volatility. There, I got it. The volatility, unpredictability, and complexity of threat environment. Number one, the proliferation of false or misleading narratives which sow discord or undermine public trust in U.S. government institutions. <clears throat> and I think you know what things that people say that would cause that exact reaction. You're now a domestic terrorist. If you say things and believe things that would undermine our uh, trust in our government. You're now a domestic terrorist. That's at least half the country. Number two, continued calls for violence directed at U.S. critical infrastructure, meaning um, soft targets and mass gatherings, faith-based institutions such as churches, synagogues, and mosques, institutions of higher education, racial and religious minorities, government facilities and personnel, including law enforcement and the military, the media, and perceived ideological opponents, and three, calls by foreign terrorist organizations for attacks on the United States based on recent events. I can't think of anybody who, they're ta the people who they're targeting here, they're not crazy, they're not conspiracy theorists, they're not giving out misinformation. But we know exactly who they're targeting in this. And it's not BLM, and it's not Antifa, and it's not radical leftists. It's anybody conservative. But we know that those people are not being they're not connecting with foreign terrorist organizations they're not doing that they're not terrorists now the dhs would like to say that they are they would like everyone to believe that they are 
they're not. They just believe something different. They have different opinions. And that apparently now is what a domestic terrorist is. Someone who has a different ideological opinion than what the left wants you to have. That's the new definition. And it wouldn't surprise me if that definition changes. Just like we've had other ones change. Like the definition of an anti-vaxxer. It's no longer someone who doesn't believe in vaccines. It's now someone who also doesn't believe in vaccine mandates. That's not true. That's not the... That is not the definition of an anti-vaxxer. But they've absolutely changed it. They've changed the definition of racism from it being about one race thinking they are superior to another race. No matter what race that is. It could be any race. But now the new definition from the Anti-Defamation League is basically white supremacy. That's what it is. So uh, they're really good at changing definitions. And we have to stop allowing them to do that. Because when they are allowed to change definitions of things and the meaning of things, then they gain more ground in, in the culture. And it puts us that much further behind to be able to regain that ground and, and regain the culture. And it's going to be that much harder. So <clears throat> it says the primary terrorism-related threat to the U.S. continues to stem from lone offenders or small cells of individuals who are motivated by a range of foreign and or domestic grievances, often cultivated through the consumption of certain online content, meaning conservative content. The convergence of violent extremist ideologies, false or misleading narratives, and conspiracy theories have and will continue to contribute to a heightened threat of violence in the United States. You mean, like, the misleading narrative that all Trump supporters, Republicans, white people are inherently racist and bigoted and misogynistic? You mean that misinformation? No, you don't mean that. Because that's okay to say that. Because you're trying, you're trying to... Get people to believe that that's a true narrative when it's not. But you mean that we can't say that... Um, well, I don't want to say it because then I don't want to get kicked off. You know what I'm saying, though. You know exactly what we can't say. You know exactly what they are trying to say is a false narrative. That's, that is actually not. Um, the, pl the proliferation of false or misleading narratives... Which so discord. Okay, so for example, there is widespread online proliferation of or false or misleading narratives regarding unsubstantiated widespread election fraud and COVID-19. Grievances associated with these themes inspired violent extremist attacks during 2021. Um, malign foreign powers haven't continued to amplify these false or misleading narratives and efforts to damage the United States. So I'm giving you examples. <clears throat> So, number two, the continued calls for violence directed at U.S. critical infrastructure, right? So, we have foreign terrorist organizations and domestic threat actors continue to amplify pre-existing false or misleading narratives online to sow discord and undermine public trust in government institutions. Some of these actors do so to encourage unrest, which could lead to acts of violence against the facilities, individuals, institutions, and organizations cited above. Violent extremists inspired by a range of grievances and ideologies continue to target crowded venues traditionally perceived to be soft targets, such as commercial and publicly accessible facilities, public gatherings, certain government and state facilities, and houses of worship. Oh, you mean how, like, you know, uh, six city blocks in Seattle were taken over and turned into an autonomous zone? Chaz Chop? You mean kind of like that? Oh, no. No. That's not. That, that was not anything that happened. They didn't sow unrest. The BLM riots. You know, none of that sowed unrest or had acts of violence in it, right? Mostly peaceful. Um, it says, The recent attack on a synagogue in Colleyville, Texas, highlights the continuing threat of violence based upon racial or religious motivations as well as threats against faith-based organizations. As if you actually care about Jewish people because the left are some of the most anti-Semitic people I've ever met. And I've never met them. But they are. Um, this one says, Domestic violent extremists have also viewed attacks against U.S. critical infrastructure as a means to create chaos and advance ideological goals and have recently aspired to disrupt U.S. electric and communications critical infrastructure including by spreading false or misleading narratives about 5G cellular 
technology. And then the last one, the calls by foreign terrorist organizations. Um, foreign terrorist organizations will likely continue to maintain a highly visible online presence to attempt to inspire U.S.-based individuals to engage in violent activity. So, there you go. So, this is, oh, let's see what it was going to say about the 5G stuff. Um, today, CISA released a new infographic layering network security through uh, segmentation to encourage organizations to implement network segmentation and effective security technique that divides an organization's network into multiple segments. The infographic specifically illustrates the level of effort needed for attacks to breach and navigate an unsegmented network versus a highly segmented network. Um, so I'm not sure what they're trying to say, but anyway, who cares? So what they're doing is DHS and the Federal Bureau of Investigation continue to share timely and actionable information and intelligence with the broadcast uh, broad set broadest audience possible. This includes sharing info, info and intelligence with our partners across every level of government and in the private sector. We conduct recurring threat briefings with private sector and state, local, tribal, territorial, and campus partners, including to inform security planning efforts. DHS remains committed to working with our partners to identify and prevent all forms of terrorism and targeted violence and to support law enforcement efforts to keep our communities safe. Um, DHS's Office of Intelligence and Analysis established a new dedicated domestic terrorism branch to produce the sound, timely intelligence needed to encounter to counter related threats, the department expanded, expanded its evaluation of online activity as part of its efforts to assess and prevent acts of violence while ensuring the protection of privacy, civil rights, and civil liberties. DHS's Center for Prevention Programs and Partnerships, CP3, provides communities with resources and tools to help prevent individuals from radicalizing to violence. Okay. Um, so here's how you can help. Stay informed and prepared. Be prepared for emergency situations and remain aware of circumstances that may place you at risk. Make note of your surroundings and the nearest security personnel. Keep yourself safe online and maintain digital and media literacy to recognize and build resilience to false or misleading narratives. Review DHS resources for how to better protect businesses, houses of worship, and schools and ensure the safety of public gatherings. Prepare for potential active shooter incidents as well as efforts to prevent, protect against, respond to, and mitigate the use of explosives. Learn more about community-based resources to help prevent individuals from radicalizing to violence. So, what are they? Okay. They don't mention anything about using a VPN to keep yourself safe. You really should get a, a VPN, I promise you. I have Express VPN and I absolutely love it. Hashtag not sponsored. Um... So from DHS, it says, This publication provides info for how individuals can be resilient to harmful or false narratives in the online space and effective when consuming and sharing information online. The resource provides definitions of the various types of misleading information, offers recommendations for approaching digital content, and lists further educational and... Pro uh, what is it? Programmatic resources. Okay, so we're going to open this PDF and see what it says here. It's just two pages long. So here are your key steps for digital media literacy. Consider the source, triple check the source, identify the author, inspect the URL, examine spelling and punctuation, seek alternative viewpoints, and think before you share. And then it has... Um, your resource and then a description um, just it, this is ridiculous come on um, but but here's the definition so misinformation is false but not created or shared with the intention of causing harm malinformation is based on fact but used out of context to mislead harm or manipulate and disinformation is deliberately created to mislead, harm, or manipulate a person, social group, organization, or country. God. 
I'll link that in the um, description box for you guys to check out. Okay. Oh, and then I wanted to look at this one. I want to see what this was. This is from this, the Center for Prevention Programs and Partnerships. Oh, I'm not going to go through all that. That's a lot of stuff, too. Um, so, report potential threats. That's the last thing. Listen to local authorities and public safety officials. Yeah, do what they say, right? Don't think for yourself. If you see something, say something. Report suspicious activity and threats of violence, including online threats to local law enforcement, FBI field offices, or your local fusion center. Call 911 in case of emergency. And if you know someone who is struggling with mental health issues or may pose a danger to themselves or others, seek help. So, the National Terrorism Advisory System provides Americans with alert information on homeland security threats. It is distributed by the Department of Homeland Security. Okay, and then you can also get mobile updates from twitter.com-dhsgov. So, what is this if you see something, say something crap? Across the country, in our communities, we share everyday moments with our neighbors, family, co-workers, and friends. We go to work or school, the grocery store, or the gas station. It's easy to overlook these routine moments, but as you're going about your day, if you see something that doesn't seem quite right, say something. By being alert and reporting suspicious activity to your local law enforcement, you can protect your family, neighbors, and community. But... I, I don't know. Learn the signs. Um, expressed or implied threat. Surveillance. Theft. Loss. Diversion. Oh, you mean like the rabid looting all across the country? Testing or probing of security. Aviation activity. Breach. Attempted intrusion. Ac um, acquisition of expertise. Eliciting information. Misrepresentation. Cyber attack. Recruiting, financing, sabotage, tampering, vandalism, materials, acquisition, storage, weapons collection, storage, sector-specific incident. Oh, good lord. I'm going to put that one in there, too. I'm going to link that for you guys, too. It asked me if this page was helpful. I'm going to say no. It was not. This page was not helpful, helpful because the content... Um... I'm going to say has too little information. I'm going to have them add more to it. Okay, the last thing I wanted to talk about today is this. This is from Louder with Crowder by Joseph Gunderson. Biden admin embraces dog kink with new hire to the Department of Energy. So this is a gender fluid drag queen dog fetishist. Okay. Every day we, all, we fall further from God, folks. The Biden administration is sunk to a new low, appointing a quote unquote drag queen LGBTQ plus activist who has lectured on kink at college campuses and seems to enjoy getting jiggy with animals. I know it's a lot of extremely disgusting information really fast, but I thought it would be best to do this on uh, this one like removing a band aid. You may have read that first part over a few times just to make sure you weren't misreading it, but I'm serious about each word. Sam Britton. Who, has, who, as Red State reports from time to time, goes by his drag queen name, Sister, Radi Sister Radioactive, was recently appointed to the position of Deputy Assistant Secretary of Spent Fuel and Waste Disposition. So he'll be strutting his stuff all around the Department of Energy. I'm guessing this is the kind of stuff everyone can expect to see around the office. So if you're audio only, you have to go to Twitter. It's from, this is from Andy No, and it says, Sam Britton, a left-wing activist and advocate for sexual fetishes, has announced they will be working as a high-level staffer at the U.S. Department of Energy. Britton gave live demos on wax, bondage, and electroplay as part of their lessons. So, um, here's some of, of the, the tweets. Sam Britton tweeted out, I have some pretty big news to share with you all today. I have accepted the, uh, the offer to serve as the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Spent Fuel and Waste Disposition in the Office of Nuclear Energy for the Department of Energy. That's so scary. And then there's a picture here um, where 
a person is dressed up like a dog. Um, and yeah. And then there's another person. This one here is where he's giving a lecture at campus and he's in a dress. Um, and other people are on the ground with uh, dressed up like dogs. And then this one here is him whacking someone's bottom. And he's in leather thigh-high boots and a red leather cloak dress. Oh my god, it's disgusting. Um, oh, and he goes by they, them, by the way. Just in case you needed to know that. <clears throat> We've all seen the creepy leather dog costumes before. It doesn't get any less gross the more you see it, though. And if the cross-dressing and BDSM dogs weren't enough to make your skin crawl, in a past interview, Britton defended his enjoyment of bestiality, saying, quote, One of the hardest things about being a handler is that I've honestly had people ask, Wait, you have sex with animals? They believe it's abusive and that it's taking advantage of someone who may not be acting up to a level of human responsibility. The other misperception is that I have some really messed up background, like, did I have some horrible childhood trauma that made me like to have sex with animals? Yep, I don't even want to comment on that. Suffice it to say, I'm about to vomit. Look, there's no way this dude is qualified to do anything within the government. He's not qualified to be a greeter at Walmart. You would think someone appointed to such a position in the government would have to be screened for mental instability. I'm guessing he's an affirmative action hire. Biden just wants to make sure he has enough dog-boning drag queens on staff. And really, next to all the pedophilia-supporting activists coming out of the woodwork, I guess it was only a matter of time before the left started to mainstream all of their other favorite perversions. Just wait, the next Secretary of Education is probably going to be a necrophiliac or something, and the left is going to tell you it's none of your business. Yeah, so they tried to say that this guy's sex life was none of our business. It's his personal life. Yeah, but he made it the public's business by sharing it. So it in turn becomes our business. And the position he's being put in, a very high level position in our government, that makes it our business too. Because we should be, we should be at peace knowing that people in these positions are stable can handle the, the stress of the job, and also, as Matt Walsh pointed out, are not huge neon signs saying, hey, China, come blackmail me, come look into my personal life and find the stuff that I'm not telling people that I'm keeping private and blackmail me to get whatever you want. You can't have people like that in high-level positions of government. You just can't. And I said we were heading off into degeneracy, and we are. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I found through watching Leon Lush on YouTube. He reacted to this person. And it's very, very creepy. I pro it's so creepy. So if you go on Instagram and search the Black Alien Project, you will, this guy will pull up. He has 1.1 million followers, okay? And... If you're watching on YouTube, you can see here this first picture on his Instagram. That is what he looked like before. And he has since done some body modification. What he has done, he has those implants in his head and stuff to make it look like he has like knots on his head. He has cut his ears off. He has cut his nose off. He has tattooed his eyes. He has tattooed his teeth. He has tattooed his tongue and split it like a snake tongue. He has cut off two of his fingers on his hand. His entire body pretty much is tattooed black. And he has weird piercings. And he says that he is only 37% done. Also, he has removed his top lip and he has removed parts of his bottom lip. Okay? And I'm not sure if that's everything that he's done, but I know that's that's what I do know that he has done. And it's creepy. I mean, this is things, this is some, the, from your nightmare. If I saw this, I would, like, want to shoot it, thinking, like, what kind of creature is this? This is not human. That is just creepy. Like, this man could never have children because he would scare his kids. No one is going to want to be with this man. And the thing is, he says he's only 37% done. He still has more to go. He says he wants to eventually be able to remove his skin 
and replace it with metal, which obviously you cannot do that. But it this is a really it, this is what society does to people today. The, whatever next thing is that he wants to do, okay? Um it's not going to be enough. It's not going to make him happy. He'll get it done and then he'll have to move to the next thing. And then he'll have to his whole life has been consumed with this. This is a very disturbed, unhappy person, and it wouldn't surprise me if he if he was possessed. This is demonic. That, that is just such, that's so demonic. And I know that, I know he's not American, but what have, what have we done? What have we allowed to happen? Because this kind of stuff takes place here too. He's from Spain. This kind of stuff happens here. And my question is, what doctor was okay with removing body parts unnecessarily. Why would any doctor ever agree to do that? That's what blows my mind. I don't I don't get it. But this is society today. This is where we're headed and we're we're going very very quickly and I think the brakes are broken. Um and we I don't know if the emergency brake is going to be enough. We have to figure something out. And this is just nuts. This is just nuts. Anyway, I'm going to leave the episode here. I hope y'all enjoyed it. And thank you for hanging out with me. Don't forget, you can go subscribe to the podcast on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple. It's one of those platforms you can leave reviews. That would be great. And then head on over to YouTube. You can watch all my other videos that are there. I can now upload again. It's been the seven days. Um, like and share my videos. Leave a comment. If you have any stories that you know about that you want to hear me talk about or you want my opinion on something, you can ask me about that. My link tree is in my description all the time. And um, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. And uh, that would mean a lot to me. But hit the notification bell so you know when I do upload new videos because sus subscriptions don't really mean anything. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. And don't forget, Friday will be a new episode I will be doing the episode where I'll be debunking evolution based on science, not, well, I'm going to talk about the biblical de debunking of evolution, but I'm going to show you the scientific debunking of evolution as well. So look for that on Friday. Anyway, have a good rest of your day and God bless.